All right. What's up? What's up, fam? This is the Mastering Your Mindset um, training right now. We are going to learn all the tools and resources to help change your mindset. Guys, first and foremost, the number one thing, number one thing that matters the most in you being successful that determines your success is your mindset. If your mindset is not right, your actions do not follow. Okay. So whatever's up here, is what is going to guide our actions, guide our footsteps. Um, if we have the right mindset up here, we are going to go out and do what needs to be done in order to be successful, okay? If we have the wrong mindset, if we are already counting ourselves out before we even get started, okay, then our actions are going to follow. We're going to put in minimal effort. We're going to not show up to things, right? We're going to do the bare minimum and then we're going to blame it on something else when we're not successful, okay? So first and foremost, most important thing, guys, is the mindset. If you do not have the right mindset, I'm glad you're here. Even if you do have the right mindset, I'm glad you're here because making a commitment to this, right, to changing this, to working on this, that is the most important thing, okay? Now, um, because I am, <laughs> I got mom brain, all right? Um, I am gonna turn off the chat box for just a little bit, all right? I am gonna turn it back on later, but I get distracted by that very easily. So I'm gonna close that for just a minute, all right? But guys, we're gonna talk today, um, when it comes to mastering your mindset, we're gonna talk about the difference between motivation and discipline, because these are two things that people confuse very often. And these are two things that can be the first step in really changing your outcome, your success. Okay. So first and foremost, what is motivation, right? Motivation is the general desire or drive to do something. Y'all, when I got up this morning and I took my kids to school, I knew I had this training I got on and I got on YouTube and listened to some ET this morning, right? Because I needed some motivation. I needed to feel it, right? I'm going to channel my inner ET today and hopefully bring y'all some motivation. I even got my ET shirt on that says, when you want to succeed as bad as you want to breathe, then you'll be successful, right? Because that's that's my guy right there. So motivation is that general desire. It's like that fired up, right? Like that inside where you're like, yes, like I could take on the world today, right? That's motivation. Y'all, that'll get you pretty far in life, right? When you motivated, that'll get you pretty far in life, but it ain't gonna get you to the top. To the top takes discipline. Now, discipline is training yourself to do something in a controlled and habitual way, right? Training yourself. Y'all, do you know what it takes? And I'm a former athlete, right? I played softball and basketball my whole life growing up. Do y'all know what it takes in order to train yourself for something? It takes work. It takes dedication. It takes daily, consistent effort, right? Training yourself is a whole nother level. It's not just, oh, I woke up and fell into this today, right? It, it's got nothing to do with getting somewhere by accident. Oh, I just accidentally found myself at the gym lifting, you know, weights. No, we made a conscious effort to get up, to drive to the gym, to put in the work, right? We made a conscious effort. We are training ourselves to take it to the next level. That's totally different. Now, here's what a lot of people think is that in order to train yourself to have discipline, it takes motivation. That's a common misconception. And if that's how what you think, I'm gonna just be the one to tell you, you wrong. You wrong. And that's okay, because a lot of people are. A lot of people believe that you got to have motivation in order to get up and go train yourself to do something. You don't. You need discipline. Discipline is saying, even when I don't want to get up, even when I want to lay in bed and I don't want to get up at 4.30 in the morning, 5 o'clock in the morning to go to the gym, even when I don't want to do that, I'm going to do it anyway, right? I'm going to get up. 
I'm going to go to the gym even on the days that I feel like crap, even on the days that I don't want to go, right? Even on the days where I'm sore from the day before or it's raining outside and I could just lay in bed today and be lazy for a little bit, right? Even on those days, it's getting up and doing it anyway because you've trained yourself to do that, okay? Now, motivation is not a bad thing. Okay. Motivation can give you improved performance, enhanced well being, personal growth, right? A sense of purpose. Y'all, when I was listening to ET this morning, he had me on fire, right? Like I was ready to take on the day. I was ready to come here, pump everybody up. I was pumped up myself. I was like pacing my room earlier, like, let's go, right? Like, I'm I'm ready to go. I'm geeked up. Let's go, right? It was only like 9.15 this morning. Like, I still have 45 minutes before this training, but I was ready, right? That's what ET do to me. I don't know if he do that to y'all. If he don't, find somebody that do, but... ET do that to me. He get me fired up, right? Ready to go. So for this training, and while I'm feeling that, right? While I'm feeling that motivation, I'm going to be 120, right? I'm going to be on it. I'm going to be on this training and give it all I got. I'm going to get off here. I'm going to do, you know, whatever I need to do in order to grow my business. I'm going to be fired up today. But what happens When it's been a few hours or maybe even the next day, I ain't listened to ET again. Maybe life got in the way. My kids drive me crazy or whatever, right? Something happens and that motivation subsides, right? Maybe I'm not feeling 120 tomorrow morning or later this evening. Maybe I... Maybe that ET and all that energy and all of that, maybe it done subsided because life got in the way. Y'all, that's where motivation fails. That's where motivation won't get you to the top. Because for the first part of today, I can be super productive, right? I can give it 120. I can do everything I need to do. I can put ads out there to to market myself and get clients. Or if I'm team building, I can put job ads out there or reach out to people. I can, you know, do a presentation if that's what I'm doing. I can do whatever and I can be super productive while I'm feeling motivated. But that motivation is fleeting. Motivation, the downside of it, It's fleeting. It's inconsistent. It's not sustainable. I can't feel 120 24 7, right? It takes a lot of energy to go 120. It takes a lot of energy to feel that pumped up. I can't do that every minute of every day. I'm going to get tired, right? Even ET, he get tired, right? So, that motivation is fleeting, y'all. That's where discipline has to come in because discipline is when you're not feeling motivated, when you're not feeling like giving 120, maybe you only feel like giving 50. You're still going to get up and give 120 because you trained your body and your mind to do that. You've got it up here. You trained up here to be ready for those moments when you don't feel like giving 120. When you wake up and you say, man, I use raining because it's about to rain here today, y'all. So it's dark, right? I could have laid in bed today and been like, ah, I could give motivation another day, right? Like I'll, I'll do that another day. I could have laid in bed and I could have said, you know what? Today's a perfect day to just be lazy, right? The rain make me want to be lazy, y'all. But instead I said, no, because I've trained up here. I've trained this to get up and say, I don't care what the weather is outside because in here we got goals. We got things to do. We got places we're trying to go, right? We got money to make. Whatever it is that pushes you, we got that at the forefront of our mind. And if yours isn't at the forefront of your mind, then that's what we need to work on here, right? That's where we need to have this help you get to that next level. 
right? If that's what you're trying to do, get to the next level, come here and let's do that. Let's work on that. Let's get the tools necessary. But here's the thing, y'all, because when you get off here, you might be really motivated. Maybe I brought motivation to you and you're you're like me. You're geeked up. You're ready to go. Let's go. I'm ready to go 120, right? But it's going to go away. Give it a few hours. Give it a day or two, right? Sometimes motivation can last a couple of days, but it's always fleeting. It's always going to subside. So what are you going to do in those moments when it subsides? What are you going to do in those moments when your body and the weak part of your mind is telling you it's okay to take a break? It's okay to take a day or two off. It's okay if I don't get up and do this, right? If I sleep in till noon, it's okay, right? What are we going to do in those moments, okay? Guys, discipline, the pros, right? The good parts of discipline, you gain tolerance, patience, and a better sense of self-control. It is consistent. Discipline is not fleeting when you do it right, okay? It's sustainable. We're not sitting here talking about geeked up 120, 150 forever, right? We're talking about discipline. You can give 120 in discipline and sustain that every single day. It helps you focus on your goals and regulate your emotions. Discipline creates habits. And y'all, here's the biggest thing. When you create a habit, a habit becomes a routine. And a routine becomes who you are daily. Daily, y'all. You get into a routine. And you are going to become that person. If I get up and I post, you know, my, my ads for gaining clients and marketing myself, if I post my job ads for team building, if I check in with my agents that I'm mentoring, if I get up and I do trainings and I lead my team, right? If I get up and I do that every single day, y'all, that becomes who I am. That habit became a routine. It happens daily. It's just who I am now, right? It becomes part of me. So now I am the person that gets up and mentors my agents. I am the person that gets up and markets my business. I am the person that gets up and, you know, prospects to, to bring in new agents. I am that person. I don't have to pretend to be that person. That is who I have become because of my routine, because of my discipline, okay? Y'all, discipline, There, I mean, it's good, right? There's some downsides to it, and you might not think that, but the downside, and this is all about how you view discipline. This is all about your mindset towards discipline. For some people, they're going to focus on the negative and say, you know what? <clears throat> I mean, discipline sounds great and all, but like, that's a lot of work. That's a lot of work. Y'all, it is. It is a lot of work to get up every day and stay disciplined when you don't want to. When your mind is telling you that you don't want to get up and you don't want to do something, it is difficult. It is an increased workload to stay disciplined. The other thing, y'all, <clears throat> some people feel like they're missing out. They're missing out. Let me tell you guys, because when I came into this business and doing this business, there's some things I gave up in order to be where I'm at right now. I don't watch TV like I used to. Y'all, I have my shows and we're getting into fall, which means all my shows are coming back, right? Like that's the time for all my shows. I got five, six shows that I like to watch. And used to, I would watch them the day they were airing, right? Like I was on right at the time. Y'all, I don't do that no more. It may be three, four days before I get to catch up on a show. Because I'm disciplined to say, I don't get to watch my show till I get my stuff done.
if I don't get done <clears throat> what needs to be done for the day for my business, if I don't get it done, then I don't get the reward of watching TV. I got to get my stuff done at that time, right? That's when I got to go post or reply to people or do quotes or whatever it may be. I'm disciplined to say TV is a reward. It is not a right, right? And granted, there are times where I'll turn the TV on, not on one of my new shows, but on a show I've probably seen 1,500 times, right? I'll watch Big Bang Theory all the time. I love that show. I'll put it on for the noise, but I'm working. I don't have to watch it because I already know what's going on, right? I could quote the whole show probably, but I'll have it for the noise, but I'm working, right? If you just need the noise, that's okay. But I'm still working. I'm still focused on what I'm doing. But guys, TV is a reward for me, right? E.T. talks about if he don't eat right, if he don't go to the gym, he can't have dessert at dinner, right? Like it's a reward. You should have rewards, not rights on things like that, right? And I can promise you a reward for me will never be that I'm going to go binge watch a show for four or five hours or all day. That ain't a reward to me. That's a waste of my time. I'll watch one, maybe two. We're pushing it at two. But one or two, right? That's my reward. Let me go watch one or two shows. But after that, it's back back to work. I got stuff to do, right? I can't sit here all day and not chase my dreams. I can't sit here all day and not do anything except watch TV and then be mad when I didn't get that sale or I didn't hit that rank or I didn't get to whatever. I can't be mad when I didn't put in the work. So it's all about how you view discipline on whether or not you're going to focus on the positive or you're going to focus on I'm, I'm missing out. Y'all, sometimes it means you don't go to that party. You don't go to that outing. You don't go to whatever, right? I remember back in um, for regionals back in the spring, um, David McCovey shared that Sarah Rogers was going for two or her three star, excuse me, her three star. And she said something to him about going for it. It was like, I don't know, like a month or so, maybe, maybe a little less than that before regionals. And he said, ah, you'll get it by, you'll get it by regionals. Sarah said, nah, nah, nah. I'm about to put myself in the dungeon. I'm gonna get it this weekend. Y'all, for that weekend, she didn't do nothing but what she was trying to do, which was hit that three-star. So if somebody called her to say, hey, you want to go do this? You want to go do that? No, nah, I'm good. I'm in the dungeon. I can't. I can't this weekend. I got to miss out on that. But it's all about her view of it because her view of it, I can, I can promise you, is that she wasn't missing anything. Her focus was on her three-star on her goals, and that was the reward. And that reward was better than anything that somebody asked her to go do. I can promise you that. She ain't even got to tell me that. I know that because it would be the same for me. So it's all about how you view it. Are you going to miss some stuff? Like, are you going to be absent from some stuff? Yeah, probably. If you truly chasing your goals, you might be absent from some things, but that's okay. Y'all, there is, um, <laughs> the I can't think of his name right now. It just escaped me, but, oh, Dave Ramsey. There we go. Dave Ramsey talks about in his financial peace class, right? In his financial peace class, he talks about live like no one else right now, meaning cut back on things, right? Don't go out to eat. Don't go out and do extra stuff. Don't go do this or that. Like live like nobody else does right now because everybody lives extra, right? Uh, guilty, guilty. Um, but everybody wants to live above their means. He said, live like no one else right now, meaning cut back on things so that you can live like no one else in the future, meaning you can go do whatever you want. I'm telling you, do the same thing with this business. Live like nobody else, right? Cut back on the extra. 
put in the work here because this business has the potential to make you live like nobody else in the future in the way that you don't have to worry about nothing. Y'all go talk to Charles Lee. Ask that man how many hours a week he works. You can't even ask him in a week. You got to ask him how many hours in a month do you work, right? He does power hour twice a month. I'll be like, Charles, that's all you do, right? It's not, but he he doesn't have to worry about that. He gets to live like nobody else because back when he was starting, he put in the time and effort. He missed out on some things. He was absent for some things, right? He put this business first and he put the work in to get where he's at now. And if that's where you want to be, you got to put the work in now. You got to be disciplined now. You're going to be absent some, from some things. That's okay. I'm absent from some things, right? Maybe even some family time. I told my husband when we were going for platinum and one star, babe, listen, I'm in the dungeon, right? And I'm not going to be able to just sit out here and watch TV with you like you want me to every single night, like one or two nights a week. Okay. But I'm in the dungeon. I'm trying to hit these goals because what we're trying to do at the time was get him retired, right? So I can either spend a few hours with you now or you can let me work and I'll get you retired and we got all the time in the world to spend together, right? He's home now. We got all day when he's not napping. He's napping right now, right? <laughs> when he ain't napping, we got all day to hang out together. But that's because I missed out on some things. I, uh, let me rephrase that. I was absent some, from some things. I didn't miss nothing because in my mind, I knew what the goal was. I knew what the result was going to be. I knew where we were going and nobody was going to keep me from going there. Right? So it's all about the way you look at it. Y'all, when it comes to discipline, I want everybody to write this down and we're going to talk about this for a minute. You need to have what we call non-negotiables. Non-negotiables. What that means, guys, I and I'm going to speak from, from experience, all right? I wake up and there are some things that are negotiable, <laughs> right? That shouldn't be. Do I want to go to the gym today? Nah, I ain't feeling it today, right? Do I want to eat healthy today? Ah. I don't know that Dr. Pepper and that ice cream look good, right? I negotiate all the time up here on some things. But we got to have non-negotiables. I'll tell you one thing I don't negotiate on is this business. That's a non-negotiable for me. Y'all, I may fail in eating healthy every day. I may fail in not going to the gym every day. But I can tell you one thing. I got a non-negotiable when it comes to this business. I don't mess around. I don't play with my business. My business is a non-negotiable. I will get up every single day and I will do something to make my business better, to get to my next goal. That's a non-negotiable for me. Non-negotiable simply means that you are going to get up every day and you're going to do it and you're not going to negotiate in your head right? Everything cannot be a negotiation because that is where when motivation is fleeting, when motivation is absent, right? You don't have the motivation. Discipline comes in and you got to say, nah, this is a non-negotiable. I will get up and I will go do this. I'm not going to negotiate in my head. Do I feel like doing it? Do I want to do it? Do I really think it's going to help? Right? I could sit there and negotiate myself out of everything if I allow myself to do that. You got to have non-negotiables. My business is a non-negotiable. I will get up every single day and I will chase after my goals when it comes to this business. I got them right here on my board. I got them right here above my computer where I see them all day, every day. When I'm working, I see them right? They're holding me accountable. I see them all day. So you got to have those non-negotiables and maybe that's going to the gym, right? I got a non-negotiable to say, okay, I'm going to get up and go to the gym 
And it doesn't matter if I feel like going to the gym. It don't matter if I'm tired. It don't matter if I am sore from the day before. Maybe that's your non-negotiable, going to the gym, right? Or maybe it's eating healthy or maybe whatever. But what I want you to do right now, guys, I want you to write down three non-negotiables. What are three non-negotiables that you are going to have? And at least one, I'm going to challenge you to say at least all three got to be with this business. Because you can add other non-negotiables for just personal life, right? You can add other non-negotiables to that. But for this business, what are three non-negotiables that you are going to have to get to your next goal? To get you where you want to go. Tommy Joe got my baby over there. Y'all write them down. But here's where people tend to, um, I don't like the word fail, but they, they don't follow through. Let me put it that way. Is because you write it down in a notebook, right? Or on a piece of paper. And then you take that notebook and you close it up and you put it away. And you don't ever look at it again right? Guilty. Uh, guys, I've been there. I've done that, right? I'm guilty myself. I'm not telling y'all anything I haven't done myself. But when it comes to non-negotiables, you know where they go in my house? They go either on my computer or they go on my board. Those are non-negotiables. I, I got to see them every day. I got to remind myself that I'm not going to negotiate about this. If I even start to negotiate about this, I'm going to see it and I'm going to say, whoop, this is discipline. I'm not negotiating. Negotiation over, right? There is no argument on my non-negotiables. And the problem is too many of us got negotiations for everything. We got no non-negotiables, right? We lacking on that. We negotiate everything. How am I feeling today? Right? Feelings are fleeting, Y'all, it's like motivation. They fleeting. They can change from one minute to the next. I could be in a mood today that says, nah, man, I ain't even in the mood. I don't want to do nothing. I don't want to work on my business today. And then at 8 p.m. tonight, I could be motivated and ready to go, but it's 8 p.m. at night, right? But if I already was disciplined and had the non-negotiables in place, I'd already got my work done. I'd have got it done at 9 a.m. or 10 a.m. or whatever time it was, I would have already been done. And by 8 p.m. when I'm feeling motivated, now that's just extra, right? If I go in and do some work, that's extra. I'm not having to wait till I feel motivated because I already got it done. And y'all, what I have found is when I have those non-negotiables and I start doing that work, or if you're talking about going to the gym, whatever, when I start doing that, it gives me motivation, Right. As I'm in the middle of working on my business, now these ideas are popping up. All these things of like, well, I could do this. I can market this. I could post here. I could do this. Right. All these ideas start popping up. And now I'm motivated to go do extra, to go do more. Because I was disciplined enough to start. Right. I was disciplined enough to have my mind right and to get into it and to say, we're going to do it regardless, regardless. Y'all, success, you talk to any successful person, any successful person, and they are going to tell you that their success was found in their routine. We went to an ET conference in Atlanta, me and Christina went to an ET conference in Atlanta. And y'all, he literally broke down his daily schedule. He has a daily schedule. Wake up at 3 a.m. from 3 a.m. to 5 a.m. Workout. 5 to 5.30, take a shower, get ready. 5.30 to 6, eat breakfast. 6 to 7, time with his wife. 7 to 8, he got a meeting. 8 to 9, right? Y'all, he got a schedule because he knows what he's going to get up and do every single day. He's got a routine that helps him be successful. 
his success was found in that routine, in that schedule. He tells everybody, make a schedule the night before. Don't get up and make it that same day because that's too late. You need to be making it the night before so that you're ready, so that you already know what needs to be done as soon as you start waking up and getting your eyes open. You should already know what you're doing. The success is found in the routine. Having a routine, y'all, helps you manage your time well. If I wait until I wake up to figure out what I want to do that day, number one, my feelings and my lack of motivation is going to determine how successful I am that day and what I do that day. I don't want that. I want the mindset I had the night before to say, I will get this done. So I'm going to put the important stuff on there. Right. And when I wake up, if I haven't made my schedule, my routine yet, when I wake up, I could waste an hour, two, three hours just figuring out what I want to do that day, right? I wake up and I'm like, oh man, I'm tired. I'm, I'm just going to like scroll on my phone for a little bit, right? I wasted 30 minutes doing that. Uh, now I guess I better get up. Let me get ready. That's another 30 minutes, 45 minutes. You know what? I probably need to eat breakfast. Let me go eat breakfast real quick. Y'all, I've already wasted two hours and I don't even have my, my schedule done yet, right? I ain't even made it yet. Then I got to sit down and I got to say, okay, what do I want to do today? Hmm, let me think about that. How long is it going to take me to think about it and write it out, right? Then I got to look at the time. Oh crap, it's already 10 o'clock, right? I done wasted two hours that I could have had stuff done by now. So make it the night before, have a schedule and no, you don't have to schedule every minute of every day like ET does. All right. But you need to have a schedule of what needs to get done. What do I need to do today to chase my goals, to hit these goals? What do I need to do? What do I need to get done tomorrow? Because we're planning the night before. What do I need to get done tomorrow? Let me write it down. When am I going to have time to do it? Y'all, I live by a schedule now because I do trainings and I do presentations and I mentor and I meet one-on-one -on -one and I do all this stuff. I live by a schedule. I don't have every minute of every day scheduled out, but I can promise you if you call me and you're like, hey, Ashley, can we do a one-on-one? -on -one? Let me check my schedule. Yeah, we can, but let me check my schedule. When can we fit that in? It's not just a, hey, yeah, let's just fly by the seat of our pants. Maybe tomorrow we'll do it. No, we're going to schedule it in. So that I make sure I get it done because it's important, right? If something is important to you, you make sure you get it done, right? I bet it's important to everybody on here, or at least I hope it is, to get your teeth brushed in the morning so you don't have funky breath talking to everybody, right? I hope that's important to you. Because <laughs> if you're talking to me, it's important to me that you don't have funky breath, all right? But that's important, right? So we make sure to get that done first thing. What's important to you in this business? What do you need to get done every day in order to progress in this business, in order to hit your goals? Make a schedule, have a routine. Y'all, we all get the same 24 hours in a day. As Tommy Joe likes to say, she ain't found the 25th hour. If she do, I told her, let me know first, all right? Let me know first, because I could use that extra hour, all right? That's all I'm saying. I could use that extra hour if she finds it. Y'all, we get 24 hours in a day. All of us get the same 24 hours, but what are you doing with that 24 hours? That's what matters. Y'all look at any of the successful people. Go in the back office. Look at the top income earners, residual and commissions. They've got both on there. Look at the top income earners for both sides of this business and go talk to them. What do you do with your 24 hours? Because whatever they're doing, that's what you should be doing. If you want to be where they're at, that's what you should be doing. If you were not at, at convention this year, I got up and took um, my platinum and one star plaque and in my speech, I shared that when I came into this and I started team building in July of 21, 
that's whenever I started. I had been here about six months by that time, but that's when I started team building and mentoring. I got connected with Christina because my, I like to call her my recruiter, right? Because I mentor means a lot to me. Um, so my recruiter, the person who introduced me to this business wasn't there. She didn't mentor me. So I reached out. Y'all, I didn't let the lack of mentorship from her deter me from my goals. She doesn't get to determine what my success is. She doesn't get to tell me how successful I'll be. I don't have to rely on her to teach me how to be successful. I can go learn that on my own and I can go plug into other people who are successful and ask them what they did. And that's exactly what I did. Christina was almost platinum. And very shortly after I started, she hit platinum, but she had what I wanted. Tommy Joe had what I wanted. Amy Cabrera had what I wanted. Coach Val had what I wanted. I went and followed them. I went and learned from them. I showed up. If they were doing a training, I was on it, right? If I had a question, I reached out. I got connected. Anything they did, I was there. I followed them on, on social media because I wanted to see, what are you doing, right? I wanted to be involved. And last year at convention, I took my gold plaque and I remember Christina and Tommy and Amy at the gala dinner sitting at the front because that's where platinum tables are at. And I was all the way in the back, the very back. And I remember sitting there and being upset because all my, all my close friends, right, were at the front without me. And I walked up there at one point when Christina was taking her plaque I walked up there. We took the whole team that was there to celebrate her and be there when she gave her speech. But we went up there. And I remember Tommy Joe saying something, just stay here, just sit with us. I said, nah, because I haven't earned it. I haven't earned the right to be sitting at this table. So I'm going to go back and I'm going to go sit at my table in the back, even when I don't want to, even when everything in me said I wanted to sit right there with them. I hadn't earned it yet. I went and sat in the back so that I could be mad at myself because I let that fuel me. I let that push me. And I told them next year, I will be at this table. Save me a seat. Save me a seat right here at this table up at the front because I'm going to be there. And y'all, there was nothing that was going to stop me. And at convention, I was sitting up there at the front with them and I had earned it. I didn't just sit there because somebody let me, right? I earned that seat at that particular table. Y'all, what are you going to do in order to chase your goals? How important are your goals? And what are you going to do daily? Because my 24 hours, Y'all, if you were to come live with me, which I'm not inviting anybody to do that, so y'all cannot come live with me, but if y'all were to come live with me for a week, all right, unless you're going to give free babysitting, then you can come live with me. But if y'all were to come live with me for a week and you were to match me on, on working, right, you'd go home real tired because I go hard every single day. I chase my goals every single day. I give up some things. I'm absent from some things every single day because what's important to me is that I create a different future for my children and for myself. Y'all, I don't come from a poor family. My, my family was very middle class. Right. We didn't necessarily want for much, but we had the necessities, but we didn't have extra. Right. Both my parents are very, very corporate mindset. Corporate. Even my dad, whenever we were when we retired, my husband, he said, Oh, honey, I'm I'm really nervous about that. I'm really nervous. Like, what happens if this doesn't work? Well, first off, dad, it's going to work. Like, I'm not even entertaining that idea, right? Like, I'm not even going to entertain the doubt. And I said, it's going to work. 
you ain't got to worry. He said, well, I'm a worry anyway. All right, well, worry over there. Take your worry somewhere else. I don't want to hear about it, right? Y'all, I don't even entertain the thought of failure because I will not let myself fail. I won't do it. So I don't even entertain the thought. When we were at that ET conference, there was some other successful people there. One of them um, was, was giving the keynote speech and someone asked her, what if your bank account went to zero today? What would you do to rebuild what you built? And she said, I'm not even going to entertain that question because my bank account ain't going to go to zero. I ain't going to let it. Y'all, you need to have that mindset. Don't ask the, what if this fails right? Don't even entertain. What if this fails? What if you succeed beyond measure, right? One of my favorite quotes is, what if we fall, right? Oh, my darling, but what if you fly, right? I'm not going to entertain the falling. I'm not going to entertain the failure. I'm not going to entertain the going backwards because I've got this right to focus on the future, to focus on my goals, to focus on chasing those and hitting those goals. If I got to put myself in the dungeon, I'm going to put myself in the dungeon. I'm going to go absent for a little bit, but that's okay because when I come out, I'm going to hit another goal. I'm going to be at a better place. I'm going to give myself a raise, right? I love this business. Y'all can give yourself a raise anytime you want. Right. I love it. Listen, I, I ain't had a raise in a minute. I'm working on giving myself another raise. Let's go. You can give yourself a raise anytime. Right. Y'all, I had to get over the corporate mindset that I was raised on. One of the things that I love is like poor being poor. Right. That's not a that's not a financial description. Being poor is a mindset. You might be broke. You might be, uh, I forget what founder says, but I'm going to say underfunded, right? I don't remember if that's what he says or not, but he don't even like the word broke, right? You might be underfunded, but you ain't poor unless you have the mindset of being poor. Y'all, it doesn't matter where you start. Amy Cabrera is a perfect example of this. They were homeless at one point. Homeless, y'all. And she still jumped in and she's successful beyond measure today. They don't ever have to be homeless again because she ain't going to move backwards. She ain't going to let herself become that way again. She's got this right. She ain't poor up here. She's got the mindset right. Poor is a mindset, y'all. It doesn't matter where your family started, what your parents taught you what kind of financial situation you grew up in, it doesn't matter. What matters is what you do with that. What matters is where you go. Stop making the excuses that my parents didn't teach me this or I don't have the resources or whatever the excuse is. That's all it is. It's an excuse, right? Start getting the discipline and connect to the people that can teach you what you need to learn. You want to be a millionaire, hang out with millionaires, right? You want to be a top travel booker, go hang out with top travel bookers. You want to be a top builder in the company, go hang out with the top builders. Learn from them. We're going to talk more about that in week three, about the people you surround yourself with but learn from the people that you want to be like. That's why I earned that seat at that table with the Platinums is because I learned from other Platinums. They had what I wanted, right? I put in the work to learn from them. You can change your circumstances at any moment, but it's going to take work and it's going to take no excuses. Y'all, all excuses are going to do is break down your mindset and hold you back. That's it. That's all an excuse does. So get the discipline. Don't focus on motivation, okay? Motivation is great. But don't focus on motivation or, or rely on motivation. Focus on discipline. What are the things I can implement daily? 
What are the habits I can create? What is the routine I can create every single day? Because that is going to determine my success more than the 150 I give every now and then when I'm motivated. Consistency, y'all. That is what that is what discipline is. It is consistency. And I can get a whole lot farther in life in general, but especially in this business, if I am consistent. So work on the discipline in the next week, right? Work on creating that routine. Get your non-negotiables. If you didn't write them all down or you're still trying to think of some, that's okay. Finish it by today. That's your homework, okay? Finish it by today. Have three non-negotiables to say, I will not negotiate this in my head. This is gonna happen regardless. I will do this no matter what. Some of y'all are scared, right? Some of y'all don't have discipline or you don't hit your goals out of fear, right? You're scared to step up. You're scared to fail. You're scared to be a leader even. Y'all, I was scared to be a leader. I'll be 100% honest with you. In in 2022, when I took my gold plaque, I shared about that. Coach Val kicked my butt in 2021 at convention. She didn't even know it. Because she said, what are you scared of? If you're not team building and mentoring, what are you scared of? And I had to take a real honest look at that. I was scared of failure. But more than that, y'all, I was scared of being a leader. I didn't know if I was cut out for it. I didn't know if I was able to be a leader, right? I was scared and that was holding me back. I had to let go of that fear and I had to get my mindset right to say, I will do what it takes to become a leader and learn that role, right? I will learn as I go how to be a leader and I might slip and fall, right? I might have to get a mom talk from Amy Cabrera sometimes. That's okay. She's going to set me straight. And I'm going to work on it. I'm going to learn from that mistake and I'm going to move forward to never make that mistake again right? Don't let fear hold you back from what you're trying to achieve. I want to end it with a little story from the ET conference that we had. Um, his right-hand man was sharing about how they all went um, on a on a yacht and they were going out to the, to the coral reef and they were going to go scuba diving. And there was, I don't know, 20, 25 people. I don't remember. They're going out and on the way out there, he said he was sitting there and his niece was on this boat with him, right? And he said his niece didn't know that he could hear her, but he could. And she was asking the captain that was doing this little excursion, said, are there sharks in the water? Like where we're going, are there sharks in there? And the captain said, are you asking me if there are sharks in the ocean? <laughs> right? Like, is that what you're asking me right now? And he said, yeah, like, I can't lie to you. That's where they live, right? There's sharks in the ocean. And she said, ah, oh, I, I don't know if I can do it. I don't know if I can do it, right? And he just sat there. He, he didn't say nothing. He just sat there. He listened. They get out to the coral reef. Few of them, they're all, they're all suited up. They dive in, right? And the captain even said, when y'all dive in, I want you to immediately put your face under the water and look down. It's going to be the most beautiful sight you've ever seen in your life. Like words cannot describe how beautiful that scene is going to be. So they jump in. Some of them jump in and look down. And he said, his name's CJ. CJ said it was the most beautiful sight he has ever seen. And he came up and he looked and there was still about half the people still in the boat. They hadn't jumped in. And he asked, he's, what are y'all doing? They said, ah, you know, like that's cool and all, but like there might be sharks down there. Like we're good. We're just going to stay in the boat. And he said, he gets tired and frustrated more so because people have these goals and us leaders have seen it, right? I've I've seen it at convention where people come up to me and they say, ah, oh, Ashley, 
how'd you get to platinum? How'd you get to one star? I want to do that. That's my goal. I want to do that. Right. And they talk the game. This is going to be awesome. I'm going to put in all the work. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. I want to be there. And then when we come home, they sit in the boat. They don't want to get out. They don't want to put the work in to get to that goal. They talk a real good game, right? Guys, analyze yourself. Ask yourself questions. I do self-analyzation pretty much weekly. Am I really living up to the goals I have? Because I have big goals. I have huge goals. But am I actually putting in the work to get to those goals or am I just talking? Am I just giving lip service? Am I just sitting in the boat while everybody else is seeing the most beautiful sight in the world? Right? Am I just going to watch Emily and Sarah hit three star? Am I just going to watch Amy and Marnie and, and everybody else hit two star? Chris Trujillo. Am I going to watch them hit two star and say, oh, that's cool. You're, you're at the most beautiful site in the world, but I'm going to sit in the boat. I'm going to stay here because doing that's a little bit scary or doing that takes work. It's, it, it's unknown, right? Am I going to sit in the boat or am I going to say, I'm jumping in. I'm putting in the work. I'm diving in head first, right? I'm going to go see the most beautiful sight in the world because that's what I said I wanted. And I'm not going to let fear or lack of motivation or my crappy mindset, I'm not going to let any of that hold me back. I'm going to get my mind right so that I can go chase those, those dreams, so that I can go hit those goals, so that I myself can see the most beautiful sight in the world. I don't need to hear about it from other people that have done it because it don't ring true when someone else has to tell you about it, right? I can tell you how amazing it was when I hit one star, but if you don't, if you don't feel that, right? If you haven't done that, it don't hit the same. I can tell you how excited I was. I can tell you how pumped up I was. I can tell you, you know, when I earned my IATAN card, how excited I was. But if you haven't done that and you don't feel it for yourself, it don't mean as much, right? You can be excited. Oh, that's cool, girl. Way to go, right? But if it ain't you and you ain't doing it and feeling it for yourself, it don't hit the same. So to close it out, guys, because we're at the top of the hour, write down your non-negotiables, at least three of them in this business. Okay, you want to add some life non-negotiables after that, that's fine. But in this business, write down three non-negotiables that you are going to have. Second, work on your daily schedule, your daily routine. Make it the night before. Because even when you the lack of motivation is there, you've got that schedule to say, nah, I got to get up and do it anyway. Work on discipline, y'all. Discipline. Focus on that. Don't, flo don't focus on motivation. Because if we focus on motivation, then when it's not there, we're like, ah, well, I'm not motivated today. I'm just not feeling it today. Right? Don't focus on, on motivation. Focus on discipline. What are you going to implement to be more disciplined in your business? And I would have a couple of things I'm going to implement, right? Like get, get multiple things. So between now and next week, have the non-negotiables. Work on your routine, okay? Work on your daily schedule, your daily habits. Um, I have always been told it takes 21 days to create a habit. For the next 21 days, what habits are you going to create? 21 days, y'all, that's only three weeks. That ain't even that long, right? 21 days. What habits do you want to have in the next 21 days? Start them today. Start them today. Next week, y'all, we're going to be talking about visualization, the power of visualization, and the power of your words, the words that you speak. 
Thank you so much, guys, for hanging out with me today. I hope you guys have a fantastic rest of your day. Um, and I hope that you guys got something out of this. Um, I hope I was able to not only give some motivation, but some actual tools um, in order to help you guys. So come back next week. Um, we'll talk about visualization and the power of your words. And I hope you guys have a fantastic day. Let's all go out there and crush the day and be super successful. Bye.